as developers, we're always looking for ways to write code faster. Well, here's the tip. Don't use the sidebar and VS Code. Let me tell you why. What's up, everyone? If you're new to the channel, my name is James Hugh Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And a lot of what I talk about is how to improve your efficiency as a developer. I'm obviously a big fan of VS Code if you watched anything on this channel. So in this video, I wanna tell you how to improve your workflow inside of VS Code by not using the sidebar. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you may have heard me talk about as a developer, you wanna keep your, key, your hands on the keyboard as much as possible. The going back and forth between the keyboard and the mouse, that's the kind of stuff that slows you down. So I'm a huge advocate for shortcuts. I can't tell you how many times I've worked with someone in person and I see them missing out on using shortcuts. And I'm like, no, 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 stop. Use this short code, your shortcut, it's gonna be so much easier. And that's what I wanna talk about today. So the sidebar in VS Code is really nice to have. It's got the file explorer, it's got a debug tab, it's got some Git integration stuff built in, has lots of different features, but you almost never need to actually use it. So I'm gonna tell you in this video, shortcuts and a few extensions that will help you replace your workflow inside of the sidebar so you can do it all from your keyboard. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I'm inside of my VS Code here and I've got open the compressed FM source code. So this is for my new podcast that you should totally check out, but this is the code for the actual application itself. Not that important, just the example of a piece of code that we can use in this demo. So when we open up this sidebar to the file explorer, you can do obvious things like go and search for files, you can open files, you can move files, create folders, delete files, all that sort of stuff. But you can also do all of that stuff from your keyboard. So let's close out all of these files, which by the way, first shortcut here is Command W on Mac or Control W on Windows can close files. So no need to come up here and click the X button, Command W or Control W to close out a file. Now let's say I'm inside of this project and I want to open up a new file. So I wanna open a file, I could come in if I want the sponsors page, I could come into pages and come down to sponsors and open that page that way. But the easier way is using Command P on Mac or Control P on Windows to now do a search from your keyboard for that file. So sponsor, sponsors page inside of this directory, press enter, that file is open. So again, Command P or Control P on Windows, I can search for Cloudinary to open that file. So this is the easiest way, this is what I use all the time to open files. And if you think about this, sometimes you've got really big projects that have nested directories, maybe I have some of these. Let's look in the modules and then contact and I've got files in there. This stuff can get really hard to go in and actually just click through, but I can easily, as you get comfortable with your project, just search for the file that you're looking for, like the contact page, open, boom, done. Now I also mentioned your command W or control W will close the file, so that's great. Uh, well, let's open back up the sponsors page. And then in here, what if I wanna switch between two different pages? You probably already know this one, but just wanna be sure. Your control tab on Mac uh, and then control tab on Windows as well will allow you to switch between these files. So no matter how many I get on here, Let's open the Cloudinary page. Let's open the contact page. No matter how many things I get in here, I can toggle between them from my keyboard. Again, no reason to go back here and search for the file again, and then double click it to open it again. So we can open files, we can close files. What if we wanted to do a few things that are uh, not just built into some of, the, some of the shortcuts here, create a new file, move a new file, rename a file, something like that. Well, this is where extensions come into play. So let's look at uh, one of my favorite is the advanced new file. Now the way this works, it's this one here with the dashes, advanced new file. The way this works is it gives you a shortcut that you can use in your command palette to create a new file, but while you create it, specify which directory it's supposed to go in. This is so neat. So if I wanted to create a new file with the sidebar over here, I would have to go into the certain directory, into pages, and then right click new file, type the name, so on. But now if I open the command palette, which is command shift P on Mac or command or control shift P on Windows, if I do that, then I can do new file under advanced new file, but I have this set up to a shortcut. So I've replaced command N on my machine to trigger this advanced new file. So I don't even have to do that. So let me back out a little bit and I can do command N. Now the first thing it prompts me for is what directory do you wanna put this thing inside of? Well, I wanna put this inside of Next.js, scroll down and pages. So I'm gonna create a new page. 
This will be my test page JS. It creates the file. We can see that over here inside of pages. There's my test page file. And then I already have the file open. So again, I can uh, command in to trigger this thing. If I want to put another pages or another page in the pages directory, it pops up first. So I can pages again, test page two JS ready to go. Bingo, bingo for cheesy sound effects, words. I don't know. Uh, but really, uh, really the easiest way for me to create files. Now, one of the things that it does not do is it does not give me the ability to like move a file, rename a file. I can't tell you how many times I've created a file, either given it the wrong name or forget to add .js as an extension to the end of it. So if you need to rename a file, now I've got another extension for a few other utilities, which kind of gives maybe this away. This is the file utils extension. Now, if you look in here, you can create, duplicate, move, rename, and delete files and directories. At basically everything you could do inside of the sidebar. Now you might be wondering if this thing can also create files, why do I not use it? Why do I use the advanced new file extension specifically? The advanced new file has some extra configurations that you can add to ignore certain directories. So it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner for me to create files. You can make that decision for yourself. I would probably start with file utils, see how it works for you. Then you may need to, may want to add the advanced new file extension yourself. I'll let you make that decision. But with file utils set here, I am really comfortable with the command palette. So anything that you want to do in VS code, you can do from the command palette, which is command shift P on Mac, control shift P on Windows. And then now I just search for the thing that I want to do. So if I want to rename a file, I search rename, I press enter. Test page two is the name. What if I want test page two, three, four, five? Press enter. Now that thing is renamed. I don't have to come over to the sidebar, find the file, which is the hard part. Right click, rename, then give it a new name. I can do it all right here. So one more time. Uh, and actually, let me just show you how I would really do this myself because I don't do it as slow as I just did it for you as we're showing it. So if I wanted to rename this file, I would rename. I would come over and go back to two, enter, done. So much easier. Same type of thing if I wanted to move a file. So file utils move, where do I wanna move this directory to? What if I wanted to move it out of uh, the pages directory? Now I can get rid of pages. That thing has now moved into, I don't know what parent directory does that go to? That goes into the source directory, so it should be somewhere down here, test page two. Now, what if I realize these are not files that I really want? Well, I could come over here, right click, delete, and so on, but I could also do that here. So I could open the command palette again, do file utils, delete, enter, done. That thing is gone, same thing here. And VS Code is smart. After I've already run this delete command, it's gonna have it recent up here. So I can just press enter again, that thing is gone. I don't have to do anything inside of the sidebar over here. Now there are some use cases for me, like if I'm looking at uh, the Git integration of some of the files that have changed, for example, if I start typing in here, uh, VS Code is gonna show me that over here. So sometimes I'll use this, I'll open it up for this visual diff between my file and what uh, what could have been, what would have been, what was before. Uh, I do that occasionally, I debug occasionally. Obviously we open the, the extensions tab to go in and do some of that stuff, but I almost never use the sidebar and that should be your goal. The, the less you can do that is dependent upon your mouse, the more you can do that is dependent upon your hands, your developer hands and your keyboard, the better off you'll be hands down. All right, I hope you enjoy that. I hope you can kind of see the benefits of keeping your hands on the keyboard, keeping it away from the mouse as much as possible. If you're interested, if you felt like you learned something here, you want to know more about some powerful VS Code shortcuts, I've got a cheat sheet for VS Code that's completely free that you can check out. In addition to, I've got a full course on learning everything you need to know on VS Code. So you'll have a link to both of those resources in the description below. Uh, curious, let me know some of your favorite shortcuts in VS Code. Throw those in the comments. And uh, as always, thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.